Danny from Pico here with release of 1.2 of our Unity OpenXR SDK. It is now out of preview, which means you can officially launch your Unity OpenXR app on the Pico Store. Another benefit is now you can, with that SDK, you can use Unity's XR hand interactions, which you normally couldn't use with our regular SDK. So you can use things like the grab interactable, gray interactable, and the direct interactable. Let's get started. Requirements for this project is a Pico device, uh, 5.7 or later, a Pico Unity OpenXR SDK 1.2 XR Interaction Toolkit 2.5, and Unity 21.3.23 F1. And then for in this video, we'll be covering set up and install, packages, the SDK and Unity settings, the Pico grab detection script, how it interacts with the select action, and resources that we need for materials, poke, ray interaction, components overview, and a quick demo right at the end for you. All right, now we have a brand new scene. We're gonna go in the package manager and we're gonna be adding the Unity's XRI. So you can just add by package name. We're gonna be using 2.53. We're gonna add that, let that load. Now you're probably gonna need the restart your editor if you need to, go ahead and press that. Come back when it's all done and loaded. Here, I'm gonna import the starter assets. Then I'm gonna upgrade the XR hands here. I'm gonna install it. Right now it says 1.1, we were looking for 1.3. So once that's installed, we're gonna import the hands interaction demo and this will allow us to upgrade our XR hands to 1.3. In the project validation, once it loads, you can see here it says it needs to be fixed. So we're gonna go and press in, press that fix there. And then hand visualize sample, sure, why not? Project validation, Let's go look at our XR hand, it says 1.3, go back to build settings, we're gonna switch to Android. Do, do, do. And texture compression, I use, like that I use S A S T C. And go ahead and go to player settings. I'm gonna go to the XR plugin. I actually go to play here. While we're in settings, my lord, just look at some other players. Make sure color space is linear, uh, texture compression. And then if it's here, just I usually unclick it. And we're gonna change the packaging later. Make sure your minimum API is 29. Automatic target API is automatic. Change the scripting back in and make sure ARM64 is enabled. And then we're gonna install our OpenXR. Go ahead and press that. Once that loads and everything else, we want to go to assets. And what we're going to do is get our starter uh, sample demo from the XR Interaction Toolkit. So go to samples, XR Interaction Toolkit, go to the starter assets, and go load a demo scene. Right? We're going to be basing our project off of this. Go ahead and just save this as a new brand new scene. Let's just call it right, simple Pico hand interactions. Next, we want to import our SDK. Go ahead and go to samples, right click it, and then go back to the parent thing, go assets, go to packages, and we're going to move our Pico OpenXR SDK. We're using version 1.2. Go ahead and let this load and resolve. Right. Go to build settings, player settings here. We're going to go to the R setting, go to OpenXR, enable the Pico XR feature group in OpenXR. You can see a little red dot there. You're going to have some things in project validation you need to fix. Go ahead and just resolve everything. The main thing here is the interaction profiles that you need to edit. Go ahead and click on that inside the XR plugin manager here. Add in our touch controller profiles for Pico 4 and Neo 3. And then make sure they have hand tracking subsystem, meta hand aim. Uh, meta hand tracking aim and systems enabled for the OpenXR. Checking everything else. Looks good. Make sure you to add our current scene, the hand interaction scene. Delete the old one. You go to Pixar SDK on the top of here. I just write temp for the FID and just apply here. And then should be ready. Go ahead and save our project, save our scene. Great. So now let's get started. So in the hands interaction demo, we're going to have a prefab there. 
and it has our XR origin hands. Um, so we're going to be replacing the ones that are currently in the scene with the one that actually has the hand set prefab set up already. So let's go ahead and let's go ahead and change this. We'll call it Pico XR Action Setup Group here. And make sure you, if it's a prefab, make sure you unpack the XR Interaction Setup Prefab first. I want the Input Action Manager and XR in Interaction Manager, but we're just replacing the XR Origin XR Rig there. Let's move it so it's closer to where we want to be, so it's nice and quick. We'll leave the uh, locomotion part uh, to a later date, or we'll leave it with you guys. Right now, we just want to focus on hand interaction, so I'll put you right next to the table where we'll be working on. Okay, should be close enough. Then for the XR origin, make sure the tracking origin mode is on floor. Let's take a look at the right hand. For the things like the drag and track, the ray interactors, you want, they, they, they work by using the select actions. So we're in the, uh, the reference here, you can see the XR right hand interaction for the select. You want to be able to fire that select action in our interaction. So let's create a script to fire off that for us. Call this uh, right in the right hand. We'll just call this. We'll create a new game object called Pico Grab Detection. We're going to make a script for that. Go to Assets, create a new folder, Scripts. Let's create a new script. Let's call it Pico Grab Detector Detection. All right. For this, we're going to need two points. We're going to need the transform of our um, index point and our thumb point, which is basically the tip of each finger. This is how we're going to measure and how we're going to do our grabbing. The distance between these will uh, tell us if we're grabbing something or releasing something. So we're going to get those values here. It's called this thumb point. Then we're going to need to know if this script is going to be uh, telling us if we're doing this with our left hand or right hand. So go ahead and add in an insert here to allow you to select a left or right hand. And, and we'll do it in our inspector by using a serialized field. Serialized field here, we're going to call this uh, handiness. I call it selected hand. And then we're going to need this float value. This is the minimum distance, how close these, your index and thumb needs to be close together for you to register that you're grabbing something. And then a bool of the previous state, so just for a logic. Great. So let's call it a new private void. Call it detect the grab. This will be running in our update. So whenever these teams are close enough, well, let's grab that distance. So the current distance between these two points and two points are the index, um, index point dot position and thumb point dot position. Now, if this current distance is smaller than our minimum grab distance, then we know we have a valid grab, right? So. So then if we do have a valid grab, we want to be triggering that input action for the select input. So let's do trigger select action. And it's going to take a Boolean value. Trigger select action. And take a bool and it'd be a current, let's call it a current grab state. So if this is true, then and it is not equal to the previous grab state. That means it's the state has changed. So let's do true here, and then we'll do false when it's not. All right. So let's just change our state from our current grab state to the previous grab state. Just helps the logic. Now we want to decide: Are we using our left hand, our right hand? Then we got to trigger that input action. So there is a left input and a right input for the select. So we need to know which one we want to be triggering. So we're getting, we need a button control for this trigger. So we had our previous value selected hand. If it's select, if the hand is our right, we're going to be triggering our meta aim right. If it's left, we're doing triggering the left. So if it is uh, the right, we're going to do meta aim hands dot right dot index pressed is the action that's in this select input action map. Otherwise be left in index pressed. And then we're going to be triggering that. 
Triggered impression select has a path to the meta aim hands. And I'll show in the input action map here. So click on here and uh, yeah, input action map. You click on here and go to any of these interactions. You go to select value, index press. You're going to be triggering this because then the interactors, the grab interactor, direct interactor are waiting for this uh, particular action. So if we do have a valid uh, button, index button control, we can do input systems. It's not here, so let's add this namespace. Go up. Unity engine, the input systems. Now it's here. We can go input system, Q delta state event. So we want to change this event. So index press, and then our current grab state is going to be true. Is it going to be false, depending on what our hand is going to be. And that's about it. I need to make sure we actually detect this in a fixed update, delete the old update, and that's it. This will allow us to have our index and thumb be the deciding factor for grabbing something. Let's go back to our Pico grab detection, select the right, and then input the values, index and the thumb point, and then there. Grab the thumb tip point here in our right hand. We're going to duplicate this, move this to our left hand, and then grab our left index and left thumb as well. Change the selected hand to left, and find our left index. Find our uh, thumb index tip here, the thumb tip, and that's it. And for the poke stabilizers, right now the poke interactor has a little a, a attached point, right? We won't be using our hand, so what you can do is just uh, move the index tip into the poke interactor where it says attach transform for the poke interactor, put our index, do the same thing for the right hand, right hand poke interactor. We're going to move our index tip into the attach transform. This will allow us to poke using the tip of index. That makes more sense, right? Okay. And in the current like 2.5, the shaders here are having errors for me. So I just go ahead and I just delete all of them. But if we do delete all of them, our hands, the shaders for our hands will be pink like this because there's no more uh, materials there. So let's go into our interaction, the U Pico Unity Interaction 2.5. This is our regular Unity Interaction SDK. I'll link it below. Go to resources and go to the hand. Let's go and grab the hand folder of the resources and drag and drop into our materials here. And we have a nice little hand material for you guys. The hand L, left, right. So let's go ahead and move it to the hand. Move the left hand over, and then the um, that pinch visual we would use it for a hand ray. Move it to the second element of materials. Same thing for our um, this left hand. Go to the right hand. Go to the pinch visualizer. Replace the rim light with the ray hand material. Again, there's some settings you want to change the Fresno colors and things like that, but we can you can play around with that later. No worries. And then let's move one of these buttons over here. So this is this one is well, it's a simple interactive will allow us to use a poke uh, interactive with that that's on our index. So um, let's move it here so it's close enough for you to check it out. Okay. And we can do like a quick overview of these interactions. So let's do poke interactions on, on the theme of the new poke. You need a simple interactor and poke filter and a poke for, for that allowance. You don't, uh, at the very least, you can just use a simple interactor and that will actually work with poke. And you can use a poke filter here. And make sure it does have a collider for whatever you're trying to poke. And then on the hand, for the left and right hand, you're going to actually have a poke uh, prefab here. Make sure it has a poke interactor and where it has a specific transform for the attached transform. That's very important there. And then for the grabbing, each of these items have the grab interactable with their rigid bodies and colliders 
and a few settings to how you want to move it. You get kinematic, is instant, there's a velocity track. Leave that up to you. Don't worry about the visuals, of course. Don't worry about that. Main thing here, grab interactable and it has the collider. Uh, the collider will show up, uh, it will it'll find it in one of the childs if you have it. You can press play and it will just populate it by finding it in the child. As you can see here, great. But the main thing here is it, these are all waiting for that select action map. Should I grab here? So if you go to our direct interactor or radio interactor, you're gonna be able to find, uh, there you go, radio interactor. So here, if you go, direction map, scroll to down, the XR controller, there you go. The XR controller action base here. So this allows us to do the select action from, and that's what it's kind of waiting for, the select action. Same thing on direct interactor, and I go click on the direct interactor, go all the way down to the XR controller. Of course, have the direct interactor uh, script as well, and then XR controller, and it's looking for the XR select action as well. And then select our action, it's this index pressed uh, action right here. And that's what we're gonna, in our script, we're gonna be firing that same action to allow us to be using these uh, in, uh, XR toolkit interactives with the Pico OpenRTX SDK. And then right here, this is what we'll be firing the index pressed event. This will allow us to use these interactors. Great. One last thing, let's change the product name, make it something simple. Uh, version 1.0. Oh, good, all right, let's go ahead and save it. And let's go into build it. We're grabbing. We do the array interactors. Uh, there you go. There's a movement here. The, the ray will actually change colors when it's actually have it right and then the poke interactor moving we use them with the index and there you have it follow us for more pico unity tutorials please let me know down in the comments if there's any topics you would like me to cover